we love you and we worship you today. God, we thank you that salvation is found within you and you alone. God, we thank you for that kind of love that that honestly we don't always understand, but God, nevertheless, you still love us. And you sent your son Jesus to die on a cross and you rose him from the dead so that we can have a relationship with you. God, we love you and we worship you today. We're so thankful for all that you've done for us. God, today, would you open our hearts that we would hear everything that you want us to hear. God, you would continue to change us from the inside out. That you do a work inside of us, God. God, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, good morning, church. Thank you for being with us. If you're online, thank you for joining us online today. We're going to get started shortly, but before we do, would you turn around and introduce yourself to somebody? There's three people are still here. Good morning. All right, there we go. Some energy in here. Well, it is uh, good to see you today. My name is Brad Keen. I am the lead pastor. Thank you for worshiping with us this morning. If you are a guest, uh, thank you for being here today. If you are watching online, thank you for tuning in. If this is your first week or uh, if you've been with us this last year, we are glad that you're able to uh, worship with us online. Just want to go through a few announcements, then we'll take up our tithes and offerings. Um, the small group at the church is here tonight in the youth building. That is at 6.30 p.m., Pastor Jeremy Alicia. Uh, host that one. So if you're looking for a small group, a small group is a great place for us to go to connect uh, with the body of Christ at large, to be able to develop some deep friendships and uh, to, to dig deeper into God's word. And so uh, there's various small groups that meet throughout the month. And so it's, it's just a great time of community and growing God's word. So if you've never been to a small group, just want to encourage you to check one of those out uh, throughout the month. Also tomorrow and Wednesday and Friday, we are serving at the sharing kitchen this week and we need people to sign up. Uh, right now, I don't think we have enough people to uh, fill all the roles that we need to this week. So if you could help out um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday this week, would you please sign up in the foyer? We could definitely use your help. That's from about 8.30 to 11. Uh, if you could help out one of those days, Monday, Wednesday, or Friday this week. Also, uh, there's a sign up in the foyer for our meal ministry team. Uh, what the meal ministry team does is when we have people that are going through challenging times in their life, they've gone through a surgery, they've just gone through a, a difficulty, we have people in the church that have volunteered to make a meal and bring a meal and help someone out. And it's just, you know, the hardest part about becoming an adult is wonder, wondering what you're going to make for dinner every night for the rest of your life. And, uh, you know, so uh, it, it just helps people that are going through those times to not have to worry about that, not have to think about that. Uh, we had a, a couple meals that were delivered to us during this this time after my mom passed away and uh, went on to, to glory to be with Jesus. And, you know, there's a couple nights where we didn't have those where it was like eight o'clock and you're just kind of in that no man's land and life isn't real. And all of a sudden you're like, maybe we should eat and feed the children, you know? And, uh, you know, thing about my seven-year-old is she'll just go get, you know, graham crackers or, you know, animal crackers and, and uh, cheese its and she's already full on crackers, so she just helps herself whenever she needs. But, you know, uh, that's what that meal ministry team does. So uh, many hands make light work. If you'd like to sign up, if you can cook, if you can't cook, serve at the sharing kitchen. Don't sign up for that. Uh, we want this to be a blessing to, to people. But uh, if you can cook and you'd like to, uh, to do that, we'd love for you to sign up and help uh, and uh, just be able to bless people in our church body when they have times of needs. Uh, also, family night every Wednesday from 7 to 8, 10, something for all ages, youth, children, adults, and uh, even nursery for the little ones. And so we'd love for you to join us uh, for that. All right, we're going to take up our tithes and our offerings in, in just a minute here. Uh, 
you know, many of you got to know my mom in the last seven and a half years. Uh, my, my dad and mom would visit quite regularly out here. And some of you have asked about her service. Uh, her service is this Saturday, 2 o'clock Eastern time, uh, 1 o'clock Central. And I'll be putting stuff on my social media page uh, this week. Uh, that's the, I guess that's the one good thing through uh, COVID and everything we've gone through is so many things are online. So her service will be streamed on the Harbor Church's YouTube uh, page, and I'll be putting stuff on that. Some of you have asked about that and uh, just want to be part of that from here. So if you're interested in that, I'll put that on my social media page this week. You can look for that. All right, let's take up our tithes and offerings uh, at this time. You know, when we take up our tithes and offerings, uh, a tithe is the first 10% of, of what God has given us. An offering is anything over and above that. And God asks us to give him our first fruits. And again, it's not because God needs money. Uh, God has everything. But it's a way of us to acknowledge that he is the source, that he has blessed us. And when we give that back to him, he continues to bless us. And so uh, if you've never tithed before, you know, I'd love to talk with you more about it or give God a chance and see what he doesn't do uh, in your life. And so uh, God just does amazing things in our life when we put him first and foremost. And so uh, we're going to do that right now. If you are here in person, there are two baskets at the back uh, on tables. You can put uh, your offering in that. Otherwise, uh, during the service here, uh, you can either go to your church uh, center app if you've got that in your phone. Otherwise, you can text to 84321, set it up that way. That makes it very, very easy, or you can go online and you can give that way uh, as well on our, on our webpage. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you, and God, we thank you that you are a good God, that you love us, that you care for us. God, we pray that you would use these tithes and offerings, God, to further your kingdom. God, they do so much more than, than just keeping the building open and keeping the heat on and the lights on, but God, we're, th we're thankful for those things. Uh, but God, we, we thank you that your word does not return void. God, we're thankful that we can, can go out uh, into all the world through social media these days. Lord, there's, there's people that watch all around the world and in Africa, Lord, we're, we're thankful that your word goes out. And God, we pray that you'd use these tithes and offerings to further your kingdom, God, that we might be a light, that we might be a beacon, not only in this region, but around the world for you. God, we pray for the service now. We pray that you'd bless Pastor Jeremy, God, that you'd give him uh, the words to speak. And God, we ask that you'd give us ears to hear and then the ability to follow through and live it out in our daily lives. In Jesus' name, amen. hard to get roadies these days, so you got to do it yourself, so that'd be about right. All right, well, good morning, everybody. I want to thank you for being here and joining us. If you're online today, thank you for, for joining us wherever you are at this morning. I uh, just really pray that uh, the time of worship was a blessing to, to you and that you were able to engage in, in just a time of worship with God and, and just uh, also trusting that uh, this morning this message will uh, work inside of you so that you can be all that God wants you to be. Uh, last week we started a series called called Welcome. If if you missed the, uh, last week, uh, hop online uh, CGS Church. You can watch all of our uh, several services and, and series that we do. Or uh, you can also go online and, and you can just listen to the audio. Maybe if you're just driving your car on the way to work and you would like to catch up on on maybe something that you missed out, we'd love for you to check that out. But basically, we're talking about God's heart for people. At the end of the day, that's, that's really what, what we hope to accomplish is that we can understand a little more about God's heart for people. We are talking about how much God loves people and wants to have a relationship with each and every one of us. Last week, we said if you were far from God, we wanted you to know that you were welcome and that God loves to go after the one. We talked about the, the illustration that Jesus talked about in the story of the, leaving the 99 sheep to go after the one, that God says that, that the one is so important that he's willing to leave the 99 to go after the one. And, and, and if, that, if you're the one, I want you to know that God loves you enough that he is coming to look for you if you were looking for him. And, and so that's, that's a little bit about what we, we talked about last week. We also talked about the fact that, that the church is to become a hospital for the hurting and not a country club for the healthy. We took a look at, at 
why Jesus was sent to this earth. And, and we, we looked at the scriptures where, where Jesus was hanging out with the tax collectors and the sinners. The Bible, the Bible specifically says the sinners that is who Jesus hung out with. And, uh, you know, really, that, that's all of us. That's all of us, but, but Jesus was known to hang out with the tax collectors and the sinners. And Jesus, he, he says that famous phrase that it's, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but those who are sick. And, and that's, that's where we get that phrase that, that, that the church is to be a hospital for the sick and not a country club for the healthy. And so this week we want to say welcome if you know God, but you've made mistakes. Uh, before we really dive into the message, I, I want to share a, a, just a, a short story or uh, talk a little bit about someone who's, who's pretty well known in the Bible. His name was, was Peter. And uh, Peter, we see him in the New Testament, and he was, uh, he was doing his everyday job of being a fisherman. Now, uh, I suppose there's some in here that would love to make that your daily job to just get to go out and go fish, you know, and, and everything. I'm, I'm sure it's a little more uh, different back then, and uh, actually we're doing a series in our, in our youth ministry called Gone Fishing, and we're, we're talking about what it means to be a fisher of men, and, and uh, so I was, I was thinking a little bit about Peter and his life, and, and how just amazing it had to have been for Jesus to just happen to walk by him and say, hey, I got, you know, catching fish is great, you're probably meeting a real natural need, but how about you become a fisher of men? And I'm sure they were like, what in the world are you talking about? And I think Jesus was, was trying to get them to understand, his, hey, listen, you know, food is important, but spiritual food is also important. Actually, it's more important. And so Jesus challenges him and Andrew, who were out fishing, to, to become fishers of men. And so these guys, were, they were working, they were minding their own business, they were just doing their everyday job when Jesus walks up and and he gives them this option. And this option ends up changing their life. And it ends up changing Peter's life. Now, one thing, this is, this is just how my brain works. Maybe your brain works similarly. But I, I start to think about that. What does that look like for, for a disciple, you know, Peter and Andrew, to just all of a sudden drop what they're doing and follow Jesus? I mean, that was their income. That was their livelihood. That was, that was what they did each and every day, and all of a sudden, they're just not doing that, you know, and, and maybe just them, that would be okay, but has anyone ever thought about how Peter explained this to his wife? I, I just like, you know, I, if I were to tell Alicia, hey, listen, I'm just going to quit everything, and I'm going to go play golf, she would definitely want to know how in the world I'm going to make any money playing golf, because she's seen me play Wii Golf, and it's not good. You know, and, I mean, there had to be been an interesting dialogue, and that's where, that's where I wish sometimes the Bible would fill us in on just some of those conversations that, that we don't get to know, but maybe in some day in heaven I'll get to sit down and ask Peter, how did that go? Were you sleeping on the couch for a while? You know, what did this look like? But Peter said he would follow Jesus, and the Bible says that he left everything. We, we talked a little bit about this in, in youth ministry, that, that they didn't hesitate they didn't say, well, give us a few days to think about it, Jesus. Let, let us go home and get all of our arrangements around. Let us sell some property first. Let us sell the rest of the fish that we just caught. The Bible says that they immediately dropped everything and followed Jesus. I just, I think that's, that's amazing. You know, I, you know, I, I know for me, I, I'm a question asker. When, when I don't understand something, I, I want to know the answers. And I think there were so many things that they didn't know about becoming fishers of men, that they could have asked Jesus. But the Bible says that they had faith and they immediately dropped everything and followed Jesus. So in, in Luke chapter 4, Peter was all, he was all in. He was following Jesus. He was serving Jesus. He witnessed Jesus doing all kinds of miracles. He's seeing people get saved and healed and set free. I mean, just seeing all kinds of amazing things. In Luke 22, we see that Peter is now one of the most outspoken and trusted disciples, and yet he makes one of the biggest mistakes he could probably make in his life. You think about Peter, you know, he sees everything that Jesus has done. He's healed people, he's done all kinds of great things, there's been miracle after miracle, he's spent time with Jesus, and then in Luke chapter 22, we see that 
Peter, this great man of faith, has this huge meltdown, and he denies Jesus three times. Now, I, I get that. You know, Jesus had been arrested and was getting ready to be crucified, and so, you know, the disciples were scared for their own life and everything. But Peter, this man who saw everything that Jesus did, made this huge mistake of telling people that he had no idea who Jesus even was. And he made this, this big mistake. And, you know, we all make mistakes in our life. And Peter sinned. You think about that. You know, you know people that we look up to, people in the Bible that we look up to, they, they were just like us. They made these mistakes from time to time. They sinned from time to time. And the Bible actually says this, and maybe you've heard this before, in, in Romans chapter 3, verse 23, if you have your Bibles, I encourage you to look there. If not, it's going to be on the screen for you to follow along with. But in Romans 3, 23, it says this. It says, for everyone has sinned. We fall short of God's glorious standard. You know, I, I, I'm a person, I, I believe 100% of the Bible. If it's there, I, I believe it. I have, I have faith to believe that the Word of God is true. And so the Bible says that everyone has sinned. You know, and, and so we, we look at sin, we think about sin. You know, I, I tell our, t our teenagers this, you know, hey, listen, if you have taken a pencil without permission off your teacher's desk, that's stealing and that is a sin. And now that seems silly, that seems silly, but yet that's what it is. Sin simply means to miss the mark. Sin means that we've missed the mark. The thing is, is you have to know what the mark is in order for you to miss it. So missing the mark is, is best illustrated through archery. But because we're inside and it's a little more dangerous, I thought I would go with something a little less risky and we'll go with darts today. Facing this way. I was going to ask Pastor Brad to hold the dartboard, but I figured that probably wouldn't be a good idea. So darts. I, I like playing darts. Um, there's several different ways that you can play darts. Some ways I'm better at than others. Uh, the, the one game that I like to play is it's called 301. And if you're not familiar with darts, you, everyone starts with 301 points and you work your way down. And what's great about that is you can just throw the dart and wherever it lands, you get points as long as you hit the board so, somewhere. So if I, if I hit the one, which is usually what I like to hit, uh, that's one point, so that would be 300 points then left to go. And, and you know, each, each mark has a value to it. And so, you know, for me, 301 is easy to do because I'm just throwing darts, throwing darts. It doesn't matter where it lands because it counts for something until you get down towards the end. See, the game of 301, you have to end exactly on the number that is left. So if I have 18 points, I need to hit the equivalent of 18. So I can either you know, do it the easy way, right, and hit just the 18, or I can hit two nines or, or whatever. But if I go over, it's called busting, and then you have to start over and you go back to 18 points. The hard thing is the smaller the number, the more focus that it takes. And so if I were to take a dart here and I said I have 18 points left and, and I were to throw a dart and I'm going to try here and see where I end up, that's 10. I missed the mark. I missed the mark. Now, fortunately, because that's only 10 points, I'm going to do it again and, and see where I'm at, and I end up with on the floor. I really missed the mark. Actually works well in the illustration as well. 17, I just busted. I really missed the mark. Sin is when we miss the mark. Now, we can look at the board, and I can say, man, I want to hit that 18. Everything within inside me wants to hit that 18. I'm competitive. I don't like to lose, and, and so I'm, I'm really going to try my best to hit the 18. You know, in life, we, we can be the same way. God, I really want to get this right. I don't want to miss the mark again, God. And we focus, and we try hard, and sometimes we still will miss the mark. The Bible says, for everyone has sinned, and we fall short of God's glorious standard. Darts can be hard. You know the target. You see it right in front of you. You're aiming for it. Sometimes you're aiming for the bullseye right in the middle. should be one of the easier things, but yet it's one of the hardest to do. Sometimes we, we focus so hard on not missing the mark that sometimes, just like my second dart, you miss it altogether. And in our life, we can do the same thing. 
God has this glorious standard for us to hit, but yet we miss the mark. And you know, the truth is, is this, that there's thousands of ways to sin out there. Some are seemingly harmless. Some are, also, are very costly. There are many ways to sin against God, and, and we, when we know the truth, but yet we don't walk in the truth, we're, we're sinning against God. When we know what's right, but we choose what's wrong, that's sinning. Then there's things like pride and anger and bitterness. There's things like unforgiveness. We have sin, this sin, all the sin affects our relationship with God and others. Our words, our attitudes can get us in, tr- in trouble from time to time. We can sin against each other. Even, even people that we love with both our words and our actions, sometimes we sin against them. The, the Bible says even our thoughts can be sinful. That is so hard. That can be so hard. There are times where, again, I'm competitive and, and things aren't going right. And I am thinking things that I know I shouldn't say, but I am thinking those things. And God says, that's sin. That's hard. That's hard. I know what I should think about, but yet I miss the mark. Jesus said there are some, some people that we really need to watch out for. Uh, there's things in the Bible that says don't sin against a young person. Don't sin against a defenseless person. Don't take advantage of anyone. And yet there are times where we've missed the mark with that. You can sin in your marriage. You can sin against your spouse. Sometimes you can even sin against your kids, causing them to resent you for maybe being overly hard on them or whatever. You can miss an opportunity to do good in someone, to someone who is in need. And if you know better, that's sin. We shouldn't overlook people that when there is something within our power to make a difference and we choose to walk away, that's sin. I think about, I think about the story of, of the Good Samaritan. You know, the, the, the religious people were the ones to walk right by the man who was in need. The sin, because they knew better. You can sin against your body by, by not respecting that the, your body is the temple of God. There's certainly all different kinds of sexual sins in, in this world that, that we can fall trap into. You can sin by putting too much of things in your body, like drugs, alcohol, caffeine, anything that can be addictive that dulls your affection towards God, is basically saying, God, these things are more important than you. And the Bible is very clear about not putting anything above God. You can sin by not following the will of God in your life. You know, there's, there's times in your life that, where you know what God's told you to do, and you don't do it. I think about Jonah and the whale. You know, Jonah, God was very clear to Jonah about what he wanted him to do. He wanted him to go to a city to, of Nineveh to share the love of God with people. And he goes, nope, I'm not going to do it. And he went the other way. And then he got swallowed by a big whale. Faith begins where the will of God is known. And so we have to learn to walk in obedience to the word of God. And that takes faith. Many times we know that God will lead us and guide us if we only seek him. But then we neglect to seek him and do what we're supposed to. You know, there's times in in my life where I go, I know I need to sit down and just slow down my life and just listen and worship and read God's word, so that way I am set up for whatever it is that God wants me to do. I know that's what I need to do, and yet football game comes on, basketball game comes on, find something else to do. We come up with a million different reasons for why we neglect spending time with God. And when we know better, that's sin. We're called to spend time with with our Heavenly Father. We're called to seek Him and listen and follow His leading. And so if you've lived more than a few minutes on this earth, you've likely made mistakes, just like I have. If you've ever been selfish, if you've ever been offended, if you've ever been influenced by friends to do what is wrong when you know what is right, I want you to know that if you've missed the mark this morning, you are in good company because we've all sinned and fallen short of God's glorious standard. The Bible says this in in Romans chapter 6, Verse 20 through 23. It says, When you were slaves to sin, you were free from the obligation to do right. And what was the result? 
You are now ashamed of the things you used to do, things that in the end, in, that things that end in eternal doom. But now you are free from the power of sin and have become slaves to God. Now you do the things that lead to holiness and result in eternal life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. You know, that's, that's a big section of Scripture with some, some serious information that we need to understand. Before we knew Jesus Christ, we were free to sin, basically, because we didn't always know better. Now, it's still sin, and we are still accountable for that. But it says this, but now you are free from the power of sin. When we ask Jesus Christ to come into our life, Jesus can free us from sin. He can free us from the power of sin. And then it says, now we are slaves to God, which means we are now connected to God. Now, the interesting thing about God is, is, is when, when he says we are his slaves, he's also calling us his children. You know, slavery has this horrible picture, and, and rightfully so. We've seen it, you know, all throughout the world, all throughout, you know, countries and, and things like that. But God says it's different in his eyes. We are called his children and he loves us, and he cares for us. And, and so I, I want you to know that that's a totally different picture than, than the world has seen. But verse 23 says this, that the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus our Lord. I want you to know that you can have this free gift of God. That it doesn't matter who you are, it doesn't matter how many times you've missed the mark, that God has this free gift, that all you have to do is choose to receive it. All you have to do is choose to take it. I, I tell our teenagers this all the time, that, that it can be like, choosing a free gift is like, if I have a car, a brand new car, whatever kind of car you really want, it's sitting up here, and I'm giving you the keys to it. Kind of like the Oprah Winfrey show. You get a car, and you get a car. And that would be awesome. But if you don't take the keys and put them in the ignition and turn it, and drive it out of here, there's no point in it. See, the gift of God is the same way. It's free. There's, there's nothing you could do. There's nothing I could do to earn it, but I have to take it, and I have to choose to accept it, and I have to choose to put it into play into my life. I have to choose to turn the key on this freedom that God has given me and that he's given you. See, you can serve sin or you can serve God, but you can't serve both. The good news is that you don't have to serve sin because of what Jesus did for you and for me. See, Jesus loved us enough. He, he came to this earth. He lived a perfect life and was willing to be an exchange for your sin and my sin. He was willing to be that exchange for, for when you miss the mark and when I miss the mark. It would be like, it'd be like me playing this game of darts and someone comes up to me and says, hey, if you don't hit the triple 20, it's death. Now, I, first of all, I would never want to play that game. But in life, it, it would be like someone come up and saying, hey, listen, if you don't hit the triple 20 with, you got one shot, it's death for you. And I take the dart and I throw it, and I miss the mark. Probably because I was so scared of dying. Wasn't really supposed to fall there. We'll just give myself a bullseye. But the bullseye wasn't the mark that I was supposed to hit. And so even though it's a great shot, even though I could, you know, I could tell everybody, man, look at that, a, a double bullseye, 50 points, that's awesome. That wasn't the mark. The mark was the triple 20 or else death. And so my sentence would have been death, but Jesus loved you and he loved me enough to walk in and say, you know what, I'm just going to take this dart here and instead of your dart, I'm going to put my dart there and I'm going to pay the price for you. See, Jesus loves you and me so much that he was willing to be the exchange so that way we can have a relationship with God. He loves you that much. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21 says this. It says, For God made Christ, who never sinned, to be the offering for our sin, so that way we could be made right with God through Christ. See, I'm not just, I'm not just making this stuff up. This is, this is what the Word of God says. The Word of God says that Jesus came to be 
in our place, to take our place because he loved us that much. So this morning, what, what do you do when you blow it? What do you, what do, you do when, when you miss the mark? You know, that's, that's an important thing because if the Bible says that we've all sinned and we miss God's mark, well, we need to figure out what to do when we do that. So there's, there's three things that, that we can do. The first thing is we have to admit it. We have to, we have to admit that we've missed the mark. We, we have to be honest with ourselves. You know, it, it, just, it just makes sense to be honest with ourselves because God knows it already. He already knows that we've, we've messed up. He already knows that we've missed the mark. So, so why not just acknowledge, God, I've missed the mark. Be real with ourselves. Be honest with God. But we have to, we have to admit it. We have to go to our Heavenly Father and say, God, look, this, this is what happened. I screwed up. I know you want me to do this, but God, I didn't do that. Just be real with God. The second thing we have to learn to do is we have to learn to give it to God. There's so many times in life where, where we take our sin and we just want to hold on to it. We just, we just hold on to it. And, and really what we do is we end up building this wall and, and eventually no one can get to us because we've built this wall of sin around us that, that no one can get to. And we have to learn to give our sin to God. It sounds simple, but it's, it's really hard to do at times. To give something away means that we have to trust that the person who takes it is actually going to do something with it. You know, that, that takes trust. You know, if, if, I, had, if I had a million dollars and, and I gave it to my son, that would be really hard for me to do because to trust that he's going to do the right thing with it, you know, buy me a vacation or... Or whatever. Trust, trust that he's going to do the right thing with it. Sometimes that's, that's hard for us to let go of things. But God says we have to learn to let go and give it to God. Something that we have to learn to do. So we have to learn to admit it. We have to learn to give it to God. And then the third thing is we have to learn to accept God's forgiveness. Sometimes that is the hardest part of moving on from sin is, is actually accepting God's forgiveness. And then sometimes we have to learn how to forgive ourselves. You know, I think that's one of the devil's biggest tricks is, is to get us to rethink about the junk that we've lived through that God's already forgiven. And he just wants to keep hitting that on, on, on replay over and over and over again. You're about to do something great for God, and, and the devil loves to come and say, yeah, but man, remember what you did last year? Remember how you missed the mark here? Remember how you missed the mark there? Remember, remember how you've done this and this and this? And if we buy into that, if we listen to that, even though God's forgiven us, we haven't forgiven ourselves, and we haven't been able to move on from it. And God doesn't want that for us. We, he wants us to accept his forgiveness and move on. You know, I, I, love, I love Paul, how he's always talking about life is like this race. And, and so he's always talking about how he's going to continue to press forward. You know, just he's, he says, I'm, I'm going to press forward towards the things that God would have for me. He's going to forget what, what happened in the past. You know, you think about Paul. We've, we've talked about this before. Paul, before he was Paul, he was Saul. And Saul was known for killing Christians. In fact, he, he loved to do it. He was a super religious person that, that didn't want anything to do with Jesus and salvation. He wanted to end the church. And so when he wasn't killing Christians, he was, he was standing there approving of killing Christians. And he was on his, his way to a city to, to actually do this again when God radically changed his life. And then Paul, Saul turned his name to Paul, and then Paul began to share the gospel everywhere he went. Now, don't you think that the devil tried to play with his mind? I think that's exactly why he said, one thing I do is forget what's behind me and move towards the goals that God has for me. As far as I know, no one here is like Saul, I hope. If so, I want you to know, press forward to the things that God has for you. God loves you. He wants to forgive you. He's got a plan for your life. 
We've all made mistakes and sins that, that we regret. But keep moving forward towards the things that God has for you. I always say, it, it, your walk with the Lord, is, it's a journey. It's about taking one more step each and every day towards him. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a sprint. There are days in my life where, where I've, I've done well and I've maybe taken two or three steps closer to God. And you know what? There's, there's days in my life where I've taken a couple steps back. And I have a choice and you have a choice. What are we going to do today with what we've been given? What, what are we going to do with our life today that, that God has given us? Are we going to choose to take a step forward and live our life for God? Or are we going to choose to take a step backwards? So we have to learn to admit it. We have to learn to give it to God, and we have to learn to accept his forgiveness. The Bible says this in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. It says, but if we confess our sins to him, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all wickedness. And like I said before, I, I choose to believe, I choose to have faith in that the word of God is absolutely true. I don't pick and choose. I don't believe that the Word of God is, is like this buffet where I can choose. Well, I, I like this, but I don't like this, so I'm not going to pay attention to this. I believe that it's all true. Some things are much harder than others. But I choose to have faith to know that if I confess my sins to Him, that God is willing and just and wants to forgive me and cleanse me from all wickedness. So for me, I try to... I try to take my, my life one day at a time. I'm not perfect at it, but I try to, try to evaluate my day each and every day. And you know what? Each and every day I find myself something that I need to admit to God about. Somewhere where I've missed the mark because I'm human. And so I have to admit it and give it to God and accept his forgiveness. But, but just something that's, that's just really good for us all to do is, is learn to look back at our day. And say, God, you know, how was my day? What did it look like? Let's, let's think back. Let's reflect on, on my day. How did I, how did I, students, if, if you're at school, how did you do while you walked through the hallways of your school? How, what kind of conversations did you engage in while you're at your lunch table? I've heard some of those stories at the lunch table. Is there things that we need to Ask for forgiveness. Adults, when we're at work, what did we say? Well, no one's at the water cooler anymore, but what, what did we say when the boss wasn't around? What did we talk about on our lunch breaks? I've heard some of those conversations too. And some, some of the things are, we've missed the mark. God, how did I do with, with my kids today? Did I, did I represent you with everything I said? Okay, God, I'm, I'm sorry that I didn't do that. Help me to do better. Show me, show me how to be a better father. Show me how to be a better pastor. Show me how to be the best version of me that, that you want me to be. And then the next day, you try to do better. And again, because we're human, there will always be something that we have to go to God about. But first John says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from wickedness. So today my challenge to you is, is that whatever it is in your life that maybe you've made a mistake, that today you would make a bold decision that you're not going to run away from God, but that you're going to run towards him. You know, Adam and Eve, after they sinned, they, they hid from God. And, you know, I, I, I think about that, I'm like... How? What, what part of you thought that you were going to get away from that? I mean, he's God. He's everywhere. And yet, I do the same thing. I, I do the same thing. There's things in my life where I'm like, well, if I just cover it up with a little bit of this or this, maybe God won't notice as much. And God's probably up in heaven going, you're not getting away with it. Just come to me. Let me fix you up. Let me help you get it right. Let me help you to hit the mark better. And so today, let's make a decision that no, that no mistake is going to keep us from following God. 
That no sin is going to keep us from running back into our Father's arms. That we're going to pursue God each and every day, no matter how many times we've missed the mark, because God is faithful and just and wants to forgive us for all of our sins. This morning, we're going to have uh, prayer teams that would love to pray with you about, about anything. Maybe you just need some encouragement. You know, that's, that's one of the biggest things that I think that we all need from time to time is just encouragement. You know, one of the great things about prayer teams is they just, they just want to stand with you and believe the best with you. They want to pray with you to encourage you. And so, so if you have a prayer need for anything, maybe, maybe there's things at home going on. Maybe, maybe uh, there's, you know, some sickness in the family. Whatever it is, allow the prayer team to pray with you. They would, they would love to be up here this morning to, to pray with you uh, about anything. And maybe, maybe you're having a hard time forgiving yourself. And you, you, you need someone to pray for you. You know, sometimes, sometimes we need other people to pray for us in order for us to move on. So allow the prayer team to, to do what God's called them to do and, and pray with you with whatever it is that you may need prayer about. And then uh, also don't forget to sign up. Uh, if you're able to help us out with the sharing kitchen uh, or you're able to help out with, with meals and things like that. You know, the nice thing about meals is it's a great way of serving the body of Christ without having to, you know, it's not an every week kind of thing. Sometimes it's just maybe once or twice even a year. And so, so if, if maybe you're like, oh, I'd like to serve in the church, but I don't have a lot of time, this might be a way for you you to also serve. So lots of different areas for you to serve uh, at. And so make sure you sign up today if you're able to, to do that. Let's all stand. Father God, we thank you so much that you love us. So much that you sent your son Jesus to take our place every time that we've missed the mark. God, we thank you that, that we don't have to die and spend an eternity in hell, but because of you, we are able to be saved. That you love us enough that you took that place and that you died and you rose again so we can have a relationship with you. God, I pray that each and every person here would accept that free gift of salvation today. God, I pray that, that for, for all of us, God, that we would Admit our sin to you. That, God, we would allow you to forgive us. God, that you would help us to do better. God, the things, God, we all struggle with different things. So, God, I just pray that you would begin to help us in the areas that we struggle at missing the mark on. God, show us how to follow you better each and every day. God, just like Paul, not forgetting what was behind but moving on forward. God, help us to move on forward each and every day to serve you better each and every day. God, we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, don't forget, uh, sign up for the things that you can sign up for. There's hot coffee in the foyer. Stick around and say hi to some people. And uh, we'll see you Wednesday. And if we don't see you Wednesday, we'll see you next week.